Uh oh. I'm below a half a tank. How'd that happen? Because, you know, like everybody says, you know, when you get down to half a tank, you should fill up. Eh, that's what we're going to exactly do. Okay? So, we're all going to go for a ride and focus. Jump on in. Buckle on up. Behave. Because you never know. I might get you a snack along the way. Okay? Well, hello there, friends and family. Glad to see you again today. You know, Mr. Tom's got to run a few errands today. But I also got, as you can see, fill up the old little focus. Plus, I've been hearing, you know, on the prepper pipeline you know and the panic parade that there ain't no gas again and where there is gas there's only regular so we're gonna fill up not because of all that because we should of course now I do got gas set aside okay so no worries and then I live in a tiny little town so I mean it ain't no larger than from one end to the other five miles max so if everything shut down would old Mr. Tom be okay well the answer to that is oh yeah I don't gotta go out but ever so often so that's what we're up to today and I figured since we were doing it might as well take a look and check out this gas situation because apparently the prepper pipeline there just ain't nothing to be had and we'll talk about more about that as we drive along today so come on with me let's take a ride so our first stop uh you know should there be any fuel left is gonna be fuel up the old focus not because we're panicking because it's just you know it's good solid advice you get down to a half you should go ahead and do it. You know, like all things. Take the proper steps that you need to do to uh, cover the most obvious problems in your life. You know, it's like I always tell y'all, and my kids, and my friends, and my family. You know, at the very least, you know, you should have two weeks of food. That should be a start for them. Along with two weeks of medication, you know, water, everything you need to live. Then you should work towards three months, 90 days. Much better. Then you should get to six months. I would say that would be, you know, the midpoint. And then you should do exactly what our forefathers did all the way back to the settling of America. My great-great-grandparents, my grandparents, great-grandparents, all of them, you know, and have enough for a year. And the reason they had to do that was because they had to uh, get through that thing called winter. Yep. So here we are at the old Valero Road. Yeah, all the pumps are open. Ain't no bags on nothing. So, I'm going to let y'all sit here and look at these here uh, bright blue uh, skies with some floating cumulus clouds while I fill it on up, okay? We'll be right back. So now, we're going to take a little ride. We got gas. That was 8.4 gallons. Cost me 
25 cents. Yep. I surely miss the days, you know, back before the election when gas prices here was $1.67 in November 2020. Yep, I miss them sorry. So let's head on down and check out the situation in my little small town. Let's talk about some, okay? I mean, it is a beautiful day for a ride, isn't it? Look at them clouds. Look at that bright blue sky. Of course, it does look like, you know, over there to the west, looks like we're starting to gray up again. Yeah, more rain. And not like we haven't got enough of it. You know what? I'm not going to complain. Now, this particular person in front of me, even though speed limit is way greater than what they're doing, they're choosing to do about 15 miles an hour. And I guess they're lost. <laughs> yep, they're not from here. But they got out of our way. You know, you got to have a little patience. So what we're going to do, oh, well, there we are. Here, let's whip in here to buddies because, you know, it is now 2.30. And let's see. They all look close. See if any of the pumps are covered or anything. No, I ain't seeing none. They all probably got the news too. You know, they probably already heard, you know, on YouTube. Or Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, that, uh, you know, we're about to have a fuel crisis. So they all filling up, or, you know, they just may be there because they need gas. <laughs> so we'll go check another one. And then, you know what we're going to do? We're going to head out to a special place I ain't ever took y'all to where apparently yesterday this whole thing uh, originated from not the particular location I'm going to be going to but one in another area somewhere in the country but we're going to talk about that once we check out uh, Marathon which is our uh, gas station, fuel station or convenience store, whatever you want to call it, on the edge of town, south edge, as we head on out towards the interstate. But I'm not thinking I'll go the interstate. I'm going to go the back way because it's more colorful, more scenic. And I think, you know, y'all might enjoy that more. What do y'all think? Now, I'm sorry. I also got a bottle of water in the car. And that, we haven't picked up our snack yet. Yep, somebody's in trouble with the state troopers. They're probably speeding. I try not to speed no more. You know, the few minutes you save ain't worth what the ticket costs anymore. Or the trouble. Here in the state of Alabama, you 30 or over, you can get charged for that there felony speeding. And they can arrest you, impound your car, and put you in jail. Not a good thing. Oh, the lake is looking beautiful. Right up to the top. River looking beautiful too. And you know what? I wish all the country was that way. But currently it's not. But I pray every day that it will be. That's all you can do. You know? Of course, you know, I'm having to deal with this here uh, traffic we got here. And I say that sarcastically because we don't got much. <laughs> and I like that. And that Penske truck up in front of me happens to be uh, one of the contract FedEx delivery people that come by my house. Around this neck of the woods, FedEx uses contractors. You ain't gonna see a FedEx truck 
Nope. And this is a perfect day for a drive. I don't care what anybody. I mean, look at the high school over there. They're getting it going on. Then look at the old one. They're tearing it down. I don't care what, what anybody says. That breaks my heart. But she ain't giving up the ghost lightly. It's taking them some work to do it. Well, we got the shell station here. And it's at $2.99 a gallon where uh, Bolero and Buddies was at $2.87. Now, I ain't seen no bags over any of their pumps. I ain't gonna pull in there because this is right at where all the highways merge. It gets a little bit uh, nasty getting back out on the highway. There goes the Pizza Hut delivery person. They must be back to delivering. Well, we'll have to bear that in mind next time we need a pizza. But when we swing around here, you y'all be uh, eyeballing that uh, shell station. I ain't seeing no bag. Maybe you, maybe some of y'all see some. Oh, we got the air road. Everybody be cool. Nope, I ain't seeing a one. So I'm going to go down here and check our marathon. Now you do know it's Fast Food Friday. Yep. So you know the kitty crew is waiting on. Yep. Chicken tenders, chicken, something. So I'm thinking, what can we have today? You know, last Fast Food Friday, they had chicken tenders from Jack's. And they loved them. <laughs> I barely got three out of the deal. And I bought a 20 piece. Now, I could uh, get some of this here, uh, Crispy, crunchy, Cajun injected chicken here at Marathon. Marathon's price, $2.89. Let's whip on up in there. See how they looking. Yep, I ain't seeing no uh, bags or any pumps closed down. No. Nope, they're all open. Yep. wonder if they still got the chicken. I don't have a sign no more. I ain't going in. Nope, I don't see a bag on any of the pumps. So I'm going to take that as a good sign. And it looks like we got traffic. Yep. Might have to, you know, take a right here and then come take a Yui. I don't know. Come on, stomp it, F-150. We're going to stomp it, too. Hang on. There we go. So you might be wondering where we're heading now. Well, we done checked the Valero. Buddies, my favorite convenience store. Check the marathon where I normally pick up some crispy crunch chicken, but I'm gonna have to stop by there and see if they're even selling it anymore. They done painted over all the crispy crunchy signage. That would be a tragedy. I love that chicken. Kitty crew didn't like it because it's spicy. But it was yummy and very juicy. So we're heading down old uh, 229 here south towards the interstate. Like I told you, we ain't gonna go on the interstate. We're gonna go and take a county road. Why? Because it's more scenic. Yeah, there's the company that brought me down to Tallahassee. Neptune Technologies. That's a fine company, too. A lot of fine people. You know what? 
they the world's largest producer of water meters in the world. And they make some jam up ones, you know, I know this because I was their uh, senior process engineer and technical manager for years. I'm just saying. Woo! This here highway's so smooth. You know, they just repaved it, what, a month or so back? And we're passing by here, the Auburn, Alabama, one of their uh, agricultural extension service stations. You know, got the pecan trees there on the right. Are they doing their research? Did you see that corn over there on the left? Is that corn? Oh, yeah. Looking so green, just starting to tassel. I'm loving it. It don't look like the corn I see in a whole lot of these here uh, YouTube gardening videos. Looking all yellow. Some of it's tiny, short. A little bit of it's tall. And right over there to the left, you might see it over there. Looks like grapes. That's actually an experiment to see if kiwis can grow in Alabama. Especially the deep south of Alabama. That's pretty neat, ain't it? Yep, they cut down all the pecan trees over there. Got some more coming up. They got all kinds of things planted out in the field. You know what? I should stop in there one day and chit-chat with them. See if they'll just let me roam around. Maybe even give me a guided tour. Wouldn't that be awesome? Because I used to stop by there on occasion, you know, years and years ago. Because I'm going to tell you what, if you're if you're depending just solely on YouTube to get your gardening and farming info from people that just like started God knows when, a year ago, two years ago, maybe three or four, maybe six or seven, then you're doing yourself a disservice. You need to stop in to your agricultural universities, chit chat with them, look at their online resources. And just like I've always said, you're missing another great opportunity when you don't go by your county agricultural extension service. They've been growing food to feed all of our faces for a long, long, long time. Decades and decades before YouTube was ever even a dream. Woo, soybeans looking good. I'm loving it. So, let's sit back, enjoy this here uh, smooth ride, with a light wind and breeze, and uh, let's head it over to the destination, or one of them, because they're nationwide, that started this whole thing yesterday. And we'll talk more about that once we get there. Coming up on the CSX Railroad Crossing, one of the oldest railroads in the South. It was here way before the Civil War, just saying. And we're going to turn on this county road, take the back way. Hope y'all don't mind. Plus, there's a whole string of traffic behind me, and they were getting irritated because the old man was just doing about 58. So let's take a ride up here, enjoy the scenery. Now there's some amazing blackberries all along the right there and along the left. Whenever I'm hankering a whole pile of blackberries, I come down here. You can spend you know, like weeks down here picking blackberries if that's what you want to do. I 
Now I know y'all can't see it, but there's corn and soybeans off to the left in big huge fields. They looking nice. And of course that on the right, big yellow building, for those of you who don't know, uh, that would be a cotton gin. You can see the sprinkler systems here on the left that are used to uh, irrigate that cornfield. Currently, they're parked. And I know the farmer is grateful for that because he don't got to buy gas, diesel, or pay electric to pump no water. Now this is how I used to go to work. When I had the time, I'd take the back way here over to the plant. Because this was scenic, relaxing, far better than getting on that super slab, you know, the interstate. And all along to the right there, you know, we're sort of following that CSX line is part of uh, Auburn, Alabama's Extension Service Agricultural Land on uh, cattle. Yeah, beef cattle. Yep, sure is. Used to be extremely busy. Yeah, the last 10 years or more. I ain't seen a whole lot going on over there. And that's bothersome. Of course, we're passing by to the left there. You might have saw it. A whole big old massive patch of Alabama cane, bamboo cane that is. It grow. There's a native species here in Alabama. We don't got to get it from China. Headed on over the creek here. Now this is going to take us behind another uh, famous place in Alabama. Y'all might not know it. Might not know uh, we even do it here in Alabama because it's been controversial and this place been closed a time or two. As in raided by the state. But I think it's currently open. I might be wrong. But when we get there I'll tell you about it, okay? Now you can probably see it just coming up on the right. There'll be a big old building. Many more. And you're probably going to wonder what in the world that is. Well, I'll tell you here in a minute, okay? Yeah, there it is, that big old gold building. You can see some other buildings there off to the right. We're crossing the interstate right now. That being I-85. And what that is over there, that's Victory Land. And when it was first put in, it was a Greyhound racing track. And then over time, it also added a casino. Now, they didn't play blackjack and all that, roulette. They played those machines, primarily bingo machines. And hence the controversy. You know, Alabama passed a law allowing greyhound racing and betting. But they didn't pass a law for other types of gambling. Of course, it's still looking pretty vacant. So I don't know if it's even open. Uh-oh. Cell tire. 5G's starting to get us. So in case it gets blurry now. You know, that's another hot topic on the Prepper Pipeline for other reasons. I'm 
just talking about the 5G. As far as I know, verifiable deaths from 5G. Yeah, I ain't seen none anywhere in the world on anything. Except all the, you know, possible could have been, might have been, they ain't telling us things that social media brings up. Well, here we are. We gotta make a right right here. And we're going to head on down. Actually, we're going we're to be going right through here, shorter Alabama. Okay? The shorter Alabama ain't much. They got a post office, city hall, they got a jail. This is Highway 80. Now, if I were to turn around and go the other way, it'd go to the world famous and historic uh, Tuskegee Institute, where George Washington Carver did all his research on peanuts. Ah, oh, here we are. Oh, they got Dollar General. But you're starting to see Popeyes. They got a Popeyes now. And a Burger King. Oh. There's where we're coming to. Love's. The Love's Truck Stop. Oh, yeah. We surely are. And got a day's in there, too. Now I'm going to try to whip on over here. And uh, go in this here Love's. I'm gonna try. Hang on. Woo, is it busy? Well, it's always busy, and their gas here is 283. All the pumps look open. Yep, y'all keep an eyeball out. All the gas ones look open, all the diesel looks open. Yep. Everybody getting fuel, getting diesel, getting that gas. It's just jamming. So, why'd we come all the way over here to Love's in Shorter, Alabama on the interstate? Well, I'll tell you why. We did it, because starting yesterday, I started seeing popping up on my uh, news feed. See, I have a news feed set up with uh, certain uh, catch words, you know, like prepper, panic, gas shortage, food shortage, floods, hurricanes, you know, tsunamis, tornadoes, you know, all, all the things. And what started popping up yesterday afternoon was there happened to be this scenario. It wasn't a scenario. They said it was actually happened. And somewhere in America there was this person that works at a Love's truck stop. And they just happened to walk into their manager's office as the manager received an email and they could see this email and the email said once the level in their fuel tanks dropped to 10% stop all sales because that's all they were going to be getting yep now I also have a friend that just traveled from uh, Louisiana all the way up to northern Mississippi actually southern Tennessee and he checked many times along his path last night in the late uh, hours of darkness to check on this too. And he didn't have no problem getting any type of fuel. 
Well, see, now he did stop in one place, just had regular. And he went in there and asked them about it. And they said, well, we ain't had anything but regular for a couple of months. And I'll talk about that in a minute. So anyway, this person saw this email. So then this person contacted a prepper, one of their friends, and told them about it. And uh, that prompted the current panic. It just spread across YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, through the prepper community, as well as everybody else, that, yep, ain't going to be no gas. But, so far here in my little uh, part of Alabama, ain't happened yet. Not saying it won't. It could. I want you to say this now. They wouldn't give this person's name. It was a her, female. Because they didn't, you know, authorize them to use her name. Ain't that the way it always is? You know, they always say, you know, I know somebody up high up in the military. High up in the government. High up in company. Whatever. But they won't ever give a name. Of course, you know, when mainstream media does that, or our government, we tend not to believe that. But somehow, magically, we'll believe some dude sitting at his dining room table in front of some curtains in a wall telling it to us. It just amazes the hell out of me. I'm sorry. But I always check into it, and that was what I'm doing today. Yep, everybody, you know, they buying their snacks, food, filling up their trucks, cars, SUVs. Life is good. And it may not be that way in your area. But like I say, what's the chance of a regular employee? Now, I was a manager for years and years and years and years. And people walk into my office all all day long if I was in there. And uh, when I wasn't in there, my computer was locked down. You couldn't see the screen. But when I was in there, they'd walk in. And could they uh, personally see what was up on my screen and read my emails? Well, the answer to that would be absolutely not. Because if you're allowing that, then you ain't much of a manager. But anyway... I'm not saying the email wasn't uh, true, but it could have been for any reason. And what I'm thinking the reason is, is there has been a uh, huge shortage of truck drivers for uh, the tanker fleet. And what's the tanker fleet? The U.S. tanker fleet is what hauls gas, diesel, heating oil, all kinds of things all across and we've all known this mainstream media everybody been telling us about this for several months now we're supposedly a hundred thousand drivers short so yeah there are going to be areas that are slim on gas maybe only have regular yep maybe rationing because no we don't have enough truck drivers because during the pandemic of 2020, when people just weren't driving, companies couldn't hold on to their drivers. They had to let them go. But those drivers still need to make a living. So they found other jobs. Whether it was over the road driving, switched industries to, you know, maybe chemicals or hazardous materials or what have you. As you can see, there's a lot of truck traffic here where I'm at. And that has caused a driver shortage in the fuel industry. And people aren't too fast to come back to it. And I will say this. Uh, I know this because my son was a fuel hauler for a couple of years. They're not paid all too great. Not all too great at all. You know, you do get home every night when you get done with your deliveries, it's a lot of hard work dragging those hoses around, filling up those tanks, and all kinds of weather for not a whole lot of money. So I'm thinking it might have been something like that. Who knows? But here in my little neck of the woods in Alabama, people are just coming by the masses. And of course, this is Friday afternoon, 
You can probably see some boats, RBs, and all kinds of things. People are getting ready for the weekend. Because we got, you know, lakes here. They're going to go on the lake. They're going to go camping. And people are traveling again. All that's a good thing. So, my loves, the only one closest to me, next one I'd have to drive about a little over an hour to get to, is all looking fine. That may not be that way in your area. You know? Maybe you have been seeing gas shortages. Maybe you can only buy a regular. Well, that's all your car needs to get by. You don't need mid-grade or super, trust me not, unless you're running a high-performance vehicle. And 99.% of America ain't. So, we're going to head her on back into Towsie. Because it is Fast Food Friday. we got to pick up something for the kitty crew. But just to make it faster, we're going to jump on here. As you can see, we're on the Super Slab Interstate 85, heading by Victory Land. And we're going to head her on back to Towsie. Quickly. Yep, got her kicked up to about, oh, 74. We need to step her back down, okay? Yeah, I've driven this here highway Ooh, thousands of times, whether it was going to Montgomery, going to the plant or taking it on up northbound to Auburn where also I manage plants so I've been both ways thousands of times go a little focus probably drive it on memory but anyway that's enough of that and we'll come on back when uh get ready to pick up the kitty crew treat for fast food Friday well as y'all can see we're back in Tallahassee and you might guess where we are going yep fast food Friday kitty crew was all under my feet when I left the house on the porch so we're going to give them what they desire yep Yes, sir. One of their all-time favorites. Chicken McNuggets. So hold on. Hello? Hi, welcome to McDonald's. Will you be using your mobile app today? No, I won't. Okay, go ahead with your order when you're ready. I would like two McDoubles and a uh, 20 piece chicken nuggets with uh, hot mustard sauce. Two McDoubles and a 20 piece with hot mustard? Yes ma'am. All right, anything else for you? No, that'll be all day, appreciate it. First one to please, thank you. Thank you ma'am. There we go. Now the McDoubles for me and y'all. I'll cut them up, everybody will get a taste. And then, of course, we'll get a few of them uh, chicken McNuggets. Not many, because we're not going to short the kitty crew. Okay? So, I'm going to pick this up real quick. And uh, we'll head around home. And I'll talk to y'all some more when we get on the front porch. Spooky! Spooky! Speedy! Speedy! Where you at, Speedy? Come on. Come on. Come here. We got a treat. Come here. Come here. Come on. Yeah, look at that. See it? Ooh. Mmm. Oh, yeah. You chowing down now. Chicken McNuggets. Oh, y'all loving it, aren't you? 
I knew you would be. Enjoy. One of your faithful fans and viewers sent Pop a little bit of green, a Benjamin, just so I could treat y'all and Gracie. So enjoy, guys, on Fast Food Friday. <laughs> There's a mockingbird somewhere around here, too. Wants them really bad. Now, as you can see, we fed the kitty crew. Gracie's got hers. Gracie's not much on people food. Gave her three little pieces. She ate two to three. <laughs> After quite some time. But you can see uh, Spooky and uh, Speedy love them. They're going at it. So, we went out. We checked gas availability. Showed you our prices. Here in my area. Even checked out our local loves. Which I might say was packed. But here again, it's Friday afternoon. The weekend's on and Love's always has the cheapest gas prices around. You can, you can see that 283, we're here in Tallahassee, it was 287, 299. And I know people that drive from here over where I'm at, all the way over to Love's and back. You have to save that four cents. I don't even tell people anymore that ain't worth it. You done drove off all your savings. I just let people do what people want to do. But the reason I wanted to come on the moral to this whole story is whenever these social media outlets or mainstream outlets start pumping this all up, and especially when they use unconfirmed sources, or what well, they just can't because they're not authorized. See, that's the first trigger where I start to go, uh-huh. Then I start digging into it. Then I'm going to go check my local area. And that. See what the situation is. Which you saw I just did. And currently, not ain't having any problems. That don't mean we won't. I mean, you saw what happened during the Colonial Pipeline. Uh, people got on social media and mainstream media and created a panic. And even in the areas, Alabama being one of them, Mississippi, Louisiana, and everything west, they all panic too. We're out buying gas <laughs> or diesel when the Colonial Pipeline didn't even service their area. But, like I say, the moral to the story is do your own research. Don't depend on social media, mainstream media. Dig a little deeper, okay? Check out your local area, maybe. Talk to some of your local suppliers if you're all that worried about it. And I don't often do these videos anymore about the panic parade, but I'm just getting tired of seeing it. Because people with the least amount of money, especially us, seniors and elderly, they throw them into a panic because we've got doctor's visits we got to make. We've got certain commitments. Now, currently, thank God, I don't have any regular doctor's visits or treatments that I have to go to. But I do know many of y'all out there do. So, you can take the safe approach, but I wouldn't panic and start hoarding gas. You know, going buying 55 gallon drums, five gallon cans, stocking it up in my garage or my carport. First of all, it's extremely dangerous. It can explode, and it has. I definitely wouldn't be putting it in water jugs, milk jugs, and shopping bags. So that was the whole point of the video. And I hope all of y'all appreciate it, or at least the ones that stay this long. Because I know those are my friends, my family, my loved ones, which many of my viewers now are. That's why I still do it. I do it for my children, my grandkids, and family, friends, and loved ones. So, until we see y'all again on the next video, y'all take care. Prep as you see fit, but hopefully you'll check into it before you jump off the edge. And I got Spook, Speedy, 
all camped out. Let me show you. <laughs> nope, didn't take long. There, it's all gone. Speedy's easing on off, find her a cool rock to lay on. And of course, Spooky's at my feet. So, until we all see you, Kitty Crew, and Gracie too, which is curled up asleep too after she ate her two pieces of chicken nuggets. On the next video, take care, stay safe, and God bless each and every one of you. Goodbye for now. Gracie, you still have one right there on your plate. You don't like chicken McNuggets? You don't like much of anything, do you? <laughs> it's, it's, it's yummy. Go ahead and eat it. No, huh? No, you ain't ever like people food. Later on.